Good morning, and thank you. Um, I'm James, and I'm an educator. Um, I've really ha never had any other career. Once upon a time, like everyone else, I had no idea what I was going to be, um, and then it all sort of fell into place. And it happened around 1995. I became a teacher. I was super excited. I had real money coming in. I was paying off student loans. And I had really two roles. One was um, a teacher of American literature. It was my major in undergrad. It was uh, my passion. Um, and I got to share it with young people every day. It was extremely exciting. Um, my other was an athletic coach. I coached football. I coached boys volleyball. It gave, it, 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 I put me in the school quite a bit, a lot of long hours, and it was, again, something I loved to do. Now, as an educator, we often find ourselves being the deliverer of messages. And your success as an educator sometimes relies upon your ability to deliver said messages. Um, I found myself delivering two messages with great consistency. The first was in the American Lit classroom. Um, and it was the message that was delivered by great writers that were made up our syllabus, made up our curriculum. They were the canonized thinkers that define American literature. And as you get it deeper and deeper into the year's study, you start to realize that a lot of them had the same message, and that was the message that I was tasked with delivering. Um, characters like Hester Prynne in The Scarlet Letter, Huck Finn in The Adventures of Huck Finn, John Proctor in The Crucible, people who lived their lives as art, philosophers and writers like Henry David Thoreau, Ralph Waldo Emerson, poets, Walt Whitman, Robert Frost, whose iconic words give the title to our event today, Sylvia Plath, Emily Dickinson. There was a message that created a theme throughout their works, which was society has this tendency to tell us what we're supposed to do. Society has this way of telling us what our priorities are supposed to be. And society tells us that we, it's our job to be dutiful and follow. However, however, sometimes the happiest people and the most successful people are the ones who stop and listen to their heart. And the people who have the courage to be an individual and ask society if what they were to being told to do was really what was in their best interest. And that was the message that I got to deliver to young people every day. And it was fabulous, and it was great, and I loved delivering it, and according to some people, I was doing a great job of delivering said message, humility aside. So, um, and then there was another message that I tended to deliver, and it was often on the fields and courts of athletics. And that one was a lot simpler, it didn't have nearly the subtlety of it. And it was just simply this, life's tough, get to work. What I mean by that is that, you know, in athletics, there is competition, and through competition we seek victory. And that it's, that's supposed to be for young people practice. Practice not for competition necessarily or victory necessarily, but when you face troubles, you come up with solutions and you push yourself and you work as a team and you do everything you're supposed to do. And you do that on the field now, you do that on the court now because you're developing these skills and these habits that will, you'll have for the rest of your life. So life's tough, keep practicing. That was my second message. And again, according to a lot of people, I was doing a pretty good job of it. I was relatively successful. And success became sort of the issue, and it's part of the next, the, the middle part of my story here. I was being so successful in delivering these messages and other things that people had marked me. People had profiled me. People had identified me, and they said things to me like, wow, we see your future. It's laid out for you. Before too long, you're going to find yourself in a position to be something like the head of the English department. It's just going to happen for you, buddy. I was in my 20s. I was kind of just excited that I had got a paycheck every Friday. Um, and so this was intense information for me. In the same building, other people would be saying things to me like, hey, you know what, you blink and you're going to be the head of the football coach, or you're going to be the athletic director, or you're going to be all these other things, because you're the one that's got what it takes to do these things. And I kept thinking to myself, again, I was a young man, and I kept saying, oh, this is great, this is big, this is huge, I'm, I'm, a, I'm successful, I'm doing well. Everybody keeps telling me this. But there was this voice that was in the back of my head. It was like sort of almost like a whisper. And it gnawed at me. And it kept telling me something. It kept telling me that this message that I kept delivering so amicably to everyone, I wasn't following it. Society was telling me I was going to be doing these things. It was a small society. It was a community of a school. But 
they were telling me that I was going to do these things and that it was my job to shut up and toe the line and, and, and be successful in this path that they laid out for me. Similarly, I kept showing up to practice every day and games every weekend, and I kept saying to myself, this is a lot tougher than what I've got laid out in front of me. In fact, I'm, I'm down to doing a couple, a handful of pretty simple decisions. What color am I going to paint, paint my picket fence? Do I want a dog or a cat? You know, and which car am I going to buy? So where's all this tough stuff I keep talking about? And these two ideas kept whispering in the back of my head. And I felt like I started to become one of those people that didn't quite practice what he preached. I became one of those people that I said, you know, don't do as I do, do as I say. I kept wondering if the message was failed by the messenger. And this bothered me. I wouldn't go so far as to say maybe I was being a little bit hypocritical. And it bothered me. And it bothered me. It bothered me. Fast forward. Very mundane Tuesday morning. I was in my sixth year of my career, this very promising career. And the date happened to be September 11th, 2001. Now, the events of that day could be told again and again and again in a much higher quality presentation than the one you're presented with right now. However, that was the moment where that whisper, that gnawing, cranked up the volume about 600%. And I just simply realized I can't do this anymore. I can't lie to my kids in the name of American canonized literature. I can't lie to my athletes in the name of this message that I was told to deliver time and time again. I needed to live, I needed to practice what I preach, I needed to live, I needed to, I needed to live the message that I'd been delivering. Fast forward, that was September. By February, I was uh, applied to the United States Peace Corps. By April, I was accepted, and by that summer, I was packing my stuff. For the next two and a half years, I lived in the mountains, the rural, impoverished area of the island of Luzon in the Republic of the Philippines. And that's where I learned. That's where I learned that you can please that voice. And you can seek a life that's as tough as you claim that it is. And it can, in fact, make a difference. Now, my Peace Corps stories are pretty cool. I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. And if you come back next year, maybe I'll share some. But in the meantime, that's not what today's story is about. Those three years were the one time that I actually stepped away from education. But like the title of our event today says, it's the next line, the road less traveled, in the words of Robert Frost, and those made all the difference. By choosing my road less traveled, by deciding to actually live the message I was delivering, it made all the difference. Happily for me, when I did return, I stepped back into the only job I'd ever really known. I was an educator. But due to those three years, I was a much better educator than I was ever before. Shortly thereafter, I found myself in a couple of other jobs, the better jobs of my career, a husband and a father. I am 10 times the husband I could have ever been. I'm 100 times the father I ever hoped to be because of that road less traveled. Thank you.